If the FIFA flag flutters above Zurich with a certain limpness, it's hardly surprising. The organization is mired in an existential crisis in such glaring contrast to the sunny uplands of its surroundings. The FIFA compound today feels part Truman Show, part corporate fortress. The global flags representing more member states than the UN are still in a neat row, but they conceal a global rift in football geopolitics. The youth game between Switzerland and France bleats with good-natured rivalry, but the media has laid siege to Fortress FIFA. The cameramen hide like paparazzi in the field, and at the end of their long lenses, the Game of Thrones is already underway. Zeb Blatter was back in his office today, pursued by one key question. What did make him fall on his sword only five days after thumbing his nose at his critics? I asked one prominent Swiss journalist whose paper has been leading coverage of the scandal. I think it's because he felt the pressure from the US justice system. He realized that he's part um, of the investigation by the Americans. For years, Sepp Plotter has been criticized by the Brits, by the Germans, by the French, by many journalists, but obviously um, he got away with it. But I think that the US justice system is a very um, str strong opponent and, and it, will be, it will be tough for him. It's a powerful tool, isn't it? It's a very powerful tool. And the Swiss banks have seen this in the last 10 years. I mean, nobody ever expected banking secrecy to go away. And it were the Americans who attacked banking secrecy. And now it's pretty much history. So if the Americans hadn't got involved in the way that they have now, you don't think that he would be resigning? I think without the power of the American legal system, he would not have resigned. The trail to Zeb Blatter may lead through his trusted right-hand man, Jerome Valk. How much did Valk know about a $10 million payment by the South African Football Association to an account controlled by this man, Jack Warner, the disgraced ex-FIFA vice president from Trinidad, now one of six people on an Interpol most wanted list? The payment was allegedly used to lubricate South Africa's winning bid for the World Cup. It was the first time Africa hosted the event and Mandela's successful involvement in the bid was seen as his last great gift to the nation. The memory of that gift now risks being tarnished by the unfolding scandal. Everyone involved denies any wrongdoing, including today South Africa's Minister of Sport. We still need the United States authorities to share with us the basis of their allegations. The fact that a payment of 10 million rands, US dollars, was made to an approved program above board does not equate to bribery. Those who allege should prove their allegations. At least South Africa's World Cup has been and gone. In Qatar, they're still waiting, indeed expecting to hold theirs. But such is the power of this scandal that the stock market there plunged in the hours after Blatter resigned. Moscow is also on the defensive, blaming a Western conspiracy for toppling the FIFA president, who is a close friend of Vladimir Putin. Hosting the World Cup is still seen as one of the greatest honors and victories a country can achieve. That's why there's so much at stake here. So when Blatter steps down, who will take the helm and reform FIFA? Will it be Prince Ali from Jordan, who ran and then bowed out last week? Or Michel Platini, the head of European football and former French star player, who voted in favor of Qatar and was once a close friend of Blatter. Can an insider even deliver reform? On the idyllic shores of Lake Zurich, they are blissfully oblivious to the tremors that have just started rattling a global game that's about politics, power and profit. Oh yes, and about a ball hitting the back of a net.